Hey, what's up? Welcome to Nate's part. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings, guys. Yo, I'm so sick and tired of doing little summaries of what I said in the previous part so you can understand what we're talking about. But anyway, I'm busy telling a story of um, uh, basically um, how my ex and I ended up like losing love, you know, because of sin and Christ being the only way to ha basically help relationships along. I'm busy telling that story. I went on right ahead to explain my ex-boyfriend how it is that before he met me he had met another woman he knew one other woman they all grew up together who was his best friend's baby mama and girlfriend but the best friend passed away and during the season of comforting one another in the sorrow he was the god dad of the little girl when they were busy comforting each other in the sorrow they fell in love nothing wrong with that they get to do that okay like proper the guy's dead ain't nobody betraying anybody here um but this woman was was a gold digger and so because she was a gold digger and my ex didn't have much she was just working in a call center blah blah all that jazz she passed him up because he didn't have money and i went on to explain how it is that usually men who um have a lot of money sometimes they feel like they don't have uh to be virtuous they don't have to be good to women because they are like spoiling them rotten or whatever so they can be rude they can be uh short and they can also be a uh, very unfaithful just not stable and they don't quickly just propose marriage to women so when you're dating one you don't even know if you're gonna end up his wife or just somebody that he spoils for like two months with trips to paris and back and then like he's on to the next one there is no stability a lot of times in wealthy men's lives and this woman wanted a wealthy man and she passed up a really great guy in favor of her pursuit of money uh however but because she was still in love with my ex-boyfriend she actually had real feelings for him Marnas Nanjelete, she then became the bane of the existence of my relationship when it uh then finally became what it is that it became oh and that it became i've got a pimple growing on my nose and it hurt for me to scratch at it okay cool beans and bananas now that we've explained that let's move right on right ahead like i said this woman was a gold digger so one time my ex and i were chilling on the couch in my mom's house and I decided to ask him a question that I regretted after he gave me the answer. I asked him out of all the women that he's ever been with, which one did he love the most? At this point, we were already exchanging I love yous, right? Because we fell in love hard and fast, quite rapidly. We were like tight, like no man, spent all our time together. Uh, and I asked him out of all the women that he's ever been with, who, which one did he love the most? And I expected him to be like, of course you, baby. Because <laughs> like I said, I'd never experienced anything like that in a man before. So I imagine that if, if at all he's treating me like this and he will change his entire life, life in order to be with me drop drugs and all that stuff here i must obviously be the, the love of his life and the answer they gave me shattered me to a million pieces he basically said okay and i quote um i gave this woman what name did i give her i said pinky right yeah i said her name was pinky mm. he responded and said that the love of his the woman the, uh, the woman that he loves the most out of every one is pinky i had heard stories about pinky before because he told me about the death of his best friend and that his best friend's baby mama was pinky and when he told me that he's in love with the best friend's baby mama i was like oh my goodness whoa um whoa oh for me it was like how do i even compete with that like you connected over somebody who died that is a bond that is fostered through a very unique circumstance that i cannot for the life of me manufacture in a vacuum i can't extract that i can't scoot that out the way i ain't gonna compete with that i was so hurt but in absolutely no position at all to dump my boyfriend because i asked him <laughs> <laughs> can't dump a guy because he gave you a gave me an honest answer guys like you know it's not like he's cheating on me whether he just confessed that out of all the women he's been with the one that he's but he was dumb though he was supposed to say it's me he was supposed to like <laughs> anyway whatever uh he said that that uh, um pinky was was the love i had experienced in the past pinky calling my boyfriend right but remember my boyfriend was pinky's kids god dad and so i thought that he was just being a responsible godfather every time he would take the call and basically cater to her needs and stay on the phone with her for my ex boyfriend was never the kind of person to stand up and go out of the room and answering the phone we were honest he like his phone was never locked like just total trust between each other right so when he would talk to her on the phone I, I, I read nothing into it i didn't even feel the need to listen in on the conversation or really be careful to gauge if these, this is these are two lovebirds talking like for me it was like it's the baby dead mama of his dead best friend thought nothing of it but after this particular con day yo now every phone call that came through was like razors in my ears guys razors yo okay so you told me that pinky was his love and i got hurt by that like severely i could not even keep a straight face and because he confessed this thing i started to notice stuff that then basically created the bane of my existence status 
in this pinky girl's you know with, with the way that this pinky girl was the bane what made pinky the bane of my existence was the observation of my boyfriend's reactions to her phone calls and her petitions right remember my ex and i used to say like we would book into hotels every weekend so we had like a relationship budget to do this and so he could no longer cater haphazardly to the needs of pinky the financial needs of pinky just like that he now had a girlfriend and i remember i told you guys in my previous past that my ex had a criminal streak in him and so he was prepared to pull random stunts in order to please women that are illegal but when he came to, into my life i told him you don't get to do that anymore and so he was no longer basically making side money at all he was just earning his nine to five salary that's all he he had so he could not just afford to let go of 2000 let go of 3500 just like that and however that th those are the kinds of monies that he just used to give this woman i never used to personally get bachelor i had my own salary i didn't even expect it so when my boyfriend was busy bacheloring another woman yo guys yes like it man did that get to me man did that pull my afro hairs out because i had an afro too even back then yo 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 this is not my real hair my real hair is underneath yeah okay guys Guys, what um one night my ex-boyfriend i remember received a call and i knew that it was pinky after that day that he told me that the woman that he is in love with the most is pinky one night maybe a week later he gets on the phone right uh, pinky calls him pinky calls him and is like i could hear i need this i need blah 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 a woman's voice i could hear it in the background right all i could think about in my mind was she's not your baby mama and that child is also not your kid i'm your woman i don't have a child with you but we're planning a future you have feelings for this woman it is no longer about god daughter anymore this is a woman using the fact that she knows you have feelings for her to just swindle you out of cash well you have a relationship now do that you have got a budget for you have never bought me at time fine i can buy my own at time but it would be nice if you you just kind of you know went to the atm in Jefela and just plonked 80 rands in my uh, uh, cell phone mara you are doing this for the i remember this woman called him ne? and we were together i remember at the time we were parked at clear water mall i think we had just had dinner yo guys she called him and we were in my car after she called him he asked me to park the car instead of drive out of the mall and uh, not park sorry but he asked me to instead of driving out of the mall we were on our way out but instead of driving out he was like wait please don't drive out can you drop me off not like can you can we first stop at the standard bank on the other side of the mall and then um we'll go yes he my my blood boiled yes why because for me it was like okay this guy told me that this is the woman that he's in love with not me i was out here in these streets feeling mad jealous vibes and then she calls him and he stops me from driving out of the mall to go to the atm i did not know what he was doing at the atm but it was certainly i believe it was airtime because whatever it is that he had to do he could have done it at home he could have stopped at like a, he could have like you know passed the atm on his way to work in the morning or whatever if at all it was physical cash that he was to give this woman or he could have actually gone into an actual bank and made a deposit but it was something that could be done only at the atm and at the time called atm you could like buy a person airtime that way so i figured I, I put two and two together that this guy was buying this woman airtime right and i remember just thinking you've never even bought me airtime fine maybe it's because i always have my own airtime but i don't care i'm your girlfriend as he dude yeah it's like i was yo you know boiling you know sorrow he where i dropped him off indeed at the atm matter during the time when i was still sitting when i was sitting in the car waiting for him to come back all these thoughts were just running in my mind on some this man literally asked his maid he asked his girlfriend to stop at an atm so that he could go and buy another woman airtime and now i knew who this woman was and crash up what the real deal story was behind it all and i just went mad when he came back into the car i was like whatever nonsense is going on between you and this woman it's it's it, like it better stop dude like i'm not gonna have you financing that woman's ways that gold digger that you explained to me the two of y'all had intimate relations of sorts whether or not you had sex i don't care bottom line is you you shared something do you understand and it's romantic Ipelile. fine she has a daughter that you love and you basically look at as like your god kid or whatever but bottom line is uh, she has a boyfriend she's not on pension she's not unemployed she also is not a woman that has no family that can take care of this child i am in your life now dude i'm your girlfriend and if at all i'll be you're not gonna finance my ways which i'm not even asking for you to do you're definitely not gonna be financing the ways of another woman so enough is enough you are not going to be buying let tig and lena eat at time you're not going 
to be doing anything so that was the, the, the on that day he basically was like okay cool like wow sharp like he did not argue with me because he knew that i was right right he was like very well after buying her airtime he was like very well okay i thought that this thing ended there but the chokehold that this guy that this woman had on, on my ex the the, the way that namo tuerika gap gap ka <laughs> the way she was basically so potent to him he decided that he's going to now start kind of low-key hiding call like what what she asks from him right he he hid from me that this chick is still calling him asking him for things one time we were again in my car and again we have a thing we had a thing about clear water mall right we were in clear water mall driving out yet again this girl calls him and this she asks him i can hear she's talking in the background it's her right he told me gay pinky i'm gonna take the call keep pinky like he used like so much and he didn't want to lose me and he would tell me this is pinky i'm gonna take a call yeah and then pinky hi uh nonti i gave him the name nonti hi nonti how are you uh i need a thousand bucks um this is what's good i want abc and the, my my boyfriend said to 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 pinky i can't um I, I don't have it like that's what he responded like in front of me right i was sitting there listening to him he was like i can't i i don't have it i can actually i, I i'm kind of broke right now and she hung up on him i could tell that she wasn't like oh okay um all right she wasn't even understanding i i you could hear and feel like, like the phone the call got disconnected and my ex-boyfriend the, the how the how slowly he brought the phone down to him like his chest area you could tell that he was sad that she hung up yes yo this guy this woman bane of my existence yes man, i wasn't sure like for me it was like dude do you still love this woman in which case i cannot be with a man that's more in love with some other woman than me it, the the self confidence busting of that the insecurities in me the eh, eh, i'm i'm not gonna compete with that i i did not comfort you through a devastating loss i didn't i didn't and at the stage my, my ex-boyfriend had also like lost his brother right so this chick like i said they grew up girlfriend and she knew his brother more than i ever did i only got to know his brother for a few months because by the time i came into his life his brother was already kind of like about to leave right so i never really got to have a relationship with the brother i never got to know him but she knew him and and I felt so like during the season of mourning of my ex ex's uh, brother when he was mourning I, I sometimes felt so closed out of that circle of comfort because I didn't really know his brother whereas everybody else did so I was sort of kind of on the outside on some I'm sorry guys for your loss whereas everybody was able to share stories exchange pleasantries and all that jazz so I really felt locked out um of it all I did feel locked out I did and this woman was among the people that were able to share pleasantries were able to share stories of him you know so Yo, guys, here that's home. you know when you the, the fumigation sometimes is a life is a year is a is a process. It's much like spiritual war. Some things you you fight off over months, man, maybe even years. There are satanists who have repented from the occult that speak about how they got delivered over two years this woman was like a strong demon that comes out only with fasting and prayer i'm sorry yeah it was hard to get rid of this woman god but i finally uh prospered so let's just like keep on talking to explain to you how that happened my ex got off the phone with her she hung up on him right and we had just had dinner gumnandi we're chatting it's like we're in love like what's up right we just were so close we were so tight okay we were so close we were so in love but this woman was like mezi momolong constantly she was a freaking fire extinguisher i am not even lying to you every time her call would come through we had animosity and hostility now you know sowing discord god these are things that he finds an abomination in his sight sowing discord between brothers anyway we should we weren't so, supposed to fornic uh, fornicate in the first place so maybe that was the issue anyway whatever so this chick was the what, what was the fire extinguisher to whatever passion my ex and i felt at any given moment una 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 brother but in a with king cessation instant cessation of adoration would happen she was a a, a smoke bomb a stink bomb in the environment it take your sisters yo lo mundo me gang tate la happiness yes or anyway what <laughs> so my very tight and absolutely loving boyfriend the the, the very beautiful relationship we had in a team one more lot thing nearly city mama lot this thing get this girl uh my ex went from being cool 
to uh, basically, you know, she was just standing in, in, in the way of our happiness. Um, anyway, whatever. Yeah, no, uh, he went from being cool to uh, like obviously very clearly somber because he disappointed her. How dare he do such a thing as that? When you really care for somebody and they are not happy with what you're doing, um, it really sucks. It can ruin your day. This woman created such an ambivalence in my boyfriend because he did not want to make me unhappy, but he also did not want to make this woman unhappy. It's like he was Skilo. Is it Skilo? Or oh, I forgot the name of that rapper from back in the day. I'm in love with these two chicks. I don't know which one to pick. Na na na. Am I confused because I love all of them? Am I confused because I can't choose one of them? Oh yeah, yeah, no. He was on that I'm in love with two chicks girl. You remember that song from back in the day. Dude, be in love with two women. Yeah, uh-uh. This, my ex-boyfriend was proper like in that little crossroads. I'm in love with these two chicks. I don't know which one to pick. Except his choice was obvious. Because I was right or die and I was happy to be with him no matter what we're the what was going on in his life whereas this woman was using him and she passed him up and she was still not prepared like i still don't know to this day if this woman was like leave her and i'll be with you i don't care uh, anymore about what's going on if my ex would have left but i ultimately uh, got that question answered i was so insecure in the presence and the climate of this female that um uh, frankly like i even wanted to break up with my ex just because i did not want to be in a relationship with a man that was in love with another woman i just i didn't want that right so the way that he was so disappointed and so saddened by the fact that she she hung up on him it created anger in me and now here it is that i'm rapping do you know barry have you seen that movie yeah bow wow <laughs> Le that, that woman she's now like uh, a dancer in the entertainment industry in like it's some Madea movie I think and she's like a nagging girlfriend the name of the boyfriend is Byron and she can't stop being like baby mama I think Barry I was like that I was like Barry except uh, naughty naughty I was here I was like you got it like what in the world like why are you so upset like I don't understand why you're so upset why are you like why are you down why are you somber like what's the issue Yo, guys, yo, this woman, I was so sad. Like, my ex-boyfriend made two to three years of my life so cold. I was so, like, I was in love with a guy that I wanted to get out of the relationship with. But I kept on getting reeled back in because, like I said, I was so in love. And, but at the same time, it's like, I was so unhappy. There was just so much random rubbish going on. And this woman was the bane of my existence. She appeared to be more able to comfort him over his brother's loss than I was because she knew him. Here it is that now they're sharing a second sorrow that I can't necessarily relate with and it's like I can't compete with this yo guys so I would get angry I would get angry I would not even be like yo like trying to talk through it on some do you want to be with me or not or what like what's going on at this time I was just crying I was like this woman this woman this woman so here it is like I said my ex-boyfriend was in an ambivalent position an ambivalent position he was caught in between two women and the one that he was with was the one that, that was willing to be with him in spite of everything and that's also another thing that really got to me I was like I don't really know if you are with me because you can't be with her like what if she one day develops a conscience or develops virtue and is happy now suddenly to be with you are you then just gonna dump me for her i can't have that level of insecurity like what in the world mm. so that's where we find ourselves right so we would fight like this and my ex started to just really get unhappy with our fights over this woman um type establishment thing he never ever stopped taking calls from this woman when i was there even though he knew that it irritated me and i think that was just one of the things the signs that he was trying to give me that look you're the one i'm with type thing i don't i'm not with her but she is my goddaughter's mom and we do share that particular bond i cannot you can't expect me to just like shut them out because like you know that's just wrong like just on an, and and i also knew that it would be wrong for him to sever her all together especially because of the girl i the little baby girl i did not have an issue with the child okay anyway very well cool beans and banana so that was what was going on right and and then my ex-boyfriend and I now this was before we we moved in together okay my um remember I was working in the same uh, sort of kind of general met metropolis like Bramfantin. yeah one time I went to his offices to wait for him in the lobby because we were gonna meet before we went to before he walked me to school because I also used to attend lectures in the evenings uh, at Wits University which also is like in the near so yeah we used to see each other every day when we were still live working in the same hood type thing so this time around instead of waiting outside 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 of his offices I waited in the lobby of the, the the company that he was working for and there was this like randomly flirtatious female that he was walking out with and she was a cute little yellow bow 
And yo, I was, I was so insecure. I then, after, like, he broke off from this woman, was like, why were you flirting with that girl? Like, you know, insecure girlfriend all up in your girl right there. He was like, no, Karabo, she's the one that's all up in my girl. She's been trying to holler at me. But she's one of those, like, all over the show in the office, right? And she also keeps on saying to me that, um... What is this? You're lucky to have me. She yeah, she keeps on saying that you are lucky to have me. She's been flirting with me, but I don't want her. I've been pushing her off because who busy? Like she's all over the show in the office. She's like that with all the guys, right? Uh, type establishment thing. So essentially, what I'm trying to explain to you guys is that guys like these, these Jezebelian women, especially when they get into a relationship, they will be. These women will suddenly start to charge like mad atoms this man precisely because he's got a ride or die woman but in the run-up to him getting the ride or die that's happy to hold him down no matter what his circumstance they are passing him shade ignoring him they don't want him because he doesn't have money blah blah blah, all that jazz so my ex-boyfriend basically just started getting an influx of these black jacks on him of bad girls because i was in his life they just have to show up in the life of men who initially they either passed up or passed shade but now that they've got women who are happy to love and embrace them then only they start to give grief to these other women but it is these bad girls that bad friends men so appreciate herald and pontificate the agenda of that these guys end up really messing up with their good girls because more celebrated are bad women by friends by man caves man caves of which later on regret the situation because they lose good women because of playing around with dumb chicks anyway whatever so uh on this day after me being kind of agitated with his activity with this flirtatious female right he then again receives another phone call from pinky right there go officing while uh, just before we were about to walk to this right well before he was walking before he would like yeah walk me to school and you know yeah type thing it was a walking distance to school anyway yeah no my boyfriend right that this was also before i got a car um th yeah this was an event before i got a car because yes no we were, when we were busy parking idling i wasn't driving my own car it was my mom's car right my mom used to let me drive her car around a lot especially on the weekends when she was still when she was sitting at home yeah so it wasn't my mom's car so at this stage i had yet to get a car that's why i was still traveling to, to fits i only got a car like maybe a year into our relationship type thing anyway whatever yeah so cool so here it is that I, i'm walking outside of his office building with him and then he gets a call from this chick it's like around july of the year and this chick on the phone says to my boyfriend i need money to buy a fascinator <laughs> for the turban july <laughs> As like, i've never even been to the turban july myself to this day i was never those kinds of girls <laughs> she calls my ex and is like i i need to i need i need like please give me money loan me or whatever like i am short a thousand five hundred rands to buy a fascinator for the durban july yes my ex was on the phone at that stage and he looks at me and is like this is being because every time pinky would call him get he would tell me because he knew how i felt he was like this is pinky on the phone and as she is busy telling him this he was like i pinky nankas honu chusaka oreka katibate july he started to stand his ground <laughs> He was like, I've been getting angry because I'm too solo. I can't get tired of being too light. Um, my girlfriend is not gonna be cool with that. He said that, yo guys. You know when you, I get it. I had just been like kind of irritated with the flirting with with some other yellow bone cutie pie that I saw in the office earlier. Coming out with my ex, girl fell about to go call something, but but she's some seventeen or no, right? And then because my ex saw that I was uneasy with the flirting woman, and he was like, "Come on, relax. This woman is like one part, but I don't want her." And she keeps on telling me that you're lucky to have me right and then he gets on the phone with this this chick calls him right there as he's standing like Cody steps on and i'm waiting for him to finish his call whatever and then pinky and then he he tells me before he answers the phone he's like keeping i'm like i start to roll my eyes on some okay whatever yeah okay pinky's calling you like of course she is right that's what i'm thinking and then pinky starts to speak about durban july and the fascinator hat and how she needs a thousand five hundred rands or look at a hat and then my ex responds to to pinky and says hey pinky nankasa khono kadima chelete yalo raka kadima ko tebenchulai i don't think my ex is going to be cool with that 
So she started to become bold, this woman, uh, in the sense that before she would be like, oh, I'm really struggling. I don't have enough money. Uh, Tura, rather, I, that's the name that I gave her, her daughter. Tura does not have this and that type thing. Now she is flat out telling him, girl, can finance uh, my trip to the Durban July. Basically, you better pay for me to be a diva out there. And my ex at that stage knows that this woman all, all over the show, and a gold digger, he knew that she was going to go to the Durban July, likely meet some like, like golfing guy over there or some horse betting man over there. Flirt with him up a storm. That's when he started to see that Pinky is using him, and that Pinky was also kind of getting active and very hectic. Lee calling him now every so often for stupid things, precisely because I was in his life. He basically started to pick up the spite of Pinky against me. He saw that she was actually trying to come at me. Unale unreasonable, and it, she was manipulating his emotions in a way that was basically messing with the relationship that he had with a woman that has been ride or die to him and she passed him up and she's now asking him to finance something that he is aware she is going to be somewhere basically just flirting with all the rich men men in town and he was like you're not gonna do that to me he just got irritated and was like i'm not gonna help you buy a fascinator for the durban july and besides i don't think my girlfriend would be cool with that and pinky got so angry like so mad she got so angry at him that i could basically hear him like you know her you know when you can over here a person screaming even though a person has not put them on on speaker and this is now bustling Johannesburg Bramfantin traffic it's loud I was like listen I could hear this woman being like what makes you think uh, what does this have you even have to do with your girlfriend I'm not even trying to come up against your girlfriend I'm just asking you for help I feel like you've changed Blah, Yazi. and he was just like pinky I'm just saying I don't have money to just be giving you like a diva <laughs> my ex was so decent that he listened to her rap and rap until she gave she hung up he did not hang up on her she hung up on him but from that day the beef you guys yes he called it like a beef the beef that pinky had with me was just like oozing out of the pores of this woman when i finally got to meet her in person and when i met her in person the description chicken chicken was nothing like what it is that i ultimately finally got to uh, see my cousin i remember you know after my ex-boyfriend told me that unale crush feelings for this pinky woman my my cousin right who grew up in this again in the same neighborhood as this woman my cousin nadula konachirina uh, for a couple of years when she was a teenager she and her crew of girlfriends were at enmity with the crew of girlfriends of this pinky girl who also used to live in that neighborhood all right and my cousin knew her even though i didn't know her i didn't know her i was like my ex is busy talking about some chick called pinky do you know her because my my I, I met my ex through my cousin uh, and my cousin's boyfriend i was like do you know pinky you know and she was like yeah i know her she when we were growing up they used to dress very well we were at enmity with them basically they were competing with me and my girl crew of girlfriends um she's cool she's she's pretty she's got a good she's got a great body that's definitely what she had going for herself and when my cousin told me that this chick has a great body my heart sank i was like oh i was kind of hoping kiss gobble i was kind of hoping she's just whatever mediocre or whatever right uh my cousin described her basically from back when they were all teenagers and according to my cousin pinky had a great body right and that she belonged to a crew of girlfriends with whom they were at rivalry so my cousin was definitely taking my side on some girl you ain't gonna let that girl take you away that was good like what gay get an enemy so i was already like i was kind of like already like at least you're in en your enemies at least you don't grow up and you knew her and you were tight or good with each other in the same neighborhood at least good that's good right uh I finally did get to um, see Pinky in the flesh, right? And really, frankly, seeing her in the flesh should be the description because I didn't meet her. It's not like I was introduced uh, uh, to her. How how did I happen upon? Let me. When was the first time I ever saw Pinky? Nah, I, uh, yes, <laughs> Pinky. It was uh, a couple of years down the line um, from that incident, right? When I finally met her. By then, everything had simmered down, uh, but like i'll i'll get to that place eventually right so my ex then started talking about how it is that pinky i'm not gonna buy hats for you blah 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 all that jazz and from that day the war intensified i thought pinky would down tools i thought at that stage she'd be like ah, not a girlfriend he's got a girlfriend now so he's busy acting like he's like he's being extra now because he's got a girlfriend 
whatever i don't have time for this no pinky put on basically it's like she went into a corner but the fish nest stockings it to be more seductive she became more intense she yo guys basically was climbing my boyfriend like he's the the like lebotangara a spider i i just yo guys <sighs> this woman from the day that my boyfriend told her my girlfriend is not going to be cool with you doing that right it got worse it got worse that's the thing about these jezebels they are so disrespectful of women of wives of girlfriends they are also even though they sometimes don't even so much want the man but they will try to stumble the man to make themselves either mistresses or side pieces so just for the sake of crushing the woman it stops being about the man but about the woman and this woman came for me she came for my relationship she came for me at this particular juncture point when uh, I was having my ex was having this conversation with Pinky on the phone i was still staying at home with my mom my ex with uh his parents and uh we were basically seeing each other on the weekends booking into hotels and stuff uh yeah guys my mom then decided to like pull a stunt on me we had some falling out in the house and she kicked me out of home i didn't have a strong enough job to afford my own apartment neither did my ex but because my boyfriend loved me so much he was not prepared to just let me sort of write it out on my own so we agreed to move in together even though we were not ready i've already briefly told that story that you know bad parents can sometimes just throw their kids into things they didn't sign up for i never ever wanted to do a fat and set i was never prepared to move in with a man unless he was my husband and i also was not prepared to give a man a child before uh, marriage right those were my rules basically even within a fornicating space but uh thanks to a falling out with my mom i ended up living with my ex boy Boyfriend. we moved in together go at like an apartment not even very far away from my mom's house yeah okay it was when we were living together that i started to experience some pretty hard knock stuff at this stage my ex's uh brother had already passed away when we moved in together right it was at this point as well that i believe the enmity or rather the beef that the dad had had with me and like sort of kind of either was started or it got worse because there were traditionals lists the parents i guess like most parents are they about planning this modern thing yogu fat and said that parents black parents just generally don't like that very much and his parents also were on that tip but they ultimately capitulated and accepted it because my ex wanted to also move out of Kohabona because it was so sorrowful there it was so painful he just wanted to get away from all the pain and the sorrow like everybody was always crying because a brother had passed away and he was like he wanted a reprieve he wanted to break away so when he moved out his his dad felt like we have a lega into that we all need to feel together and so there was like some issues there some beef but they ultimately accepted it they ultimately just like took it most especially because the mom loved me so much and i was so apparently good for the son but be before we, my ex and i moved in together already my boyfriend was already, was starting to pull some stunts on me even though he pretty much put pinky in her place but the whole thing with pinky and my ex starting to act a fool ultimately accounts for the implosion of this whole thing it ended because of just a combination of factors both from the male side and from Jezebelian women that caused my ex to lose the best thing he ever had and then end up a monster as a result women i am doing this whole series to uh, to basically untrain you from evil habits that make you hate other women because ultimately men are going to hate you for costing them certain women and that's what is currently the state with my ex-boyfriend let me go use the bathroom come back and continue with this discussion